the betting, uh, the not so much uh, anymore is more down to my own fault. Uh, I need to uh, I need to get studying again to to get the edge back. But yeah, it's a great product. I love the exchange. It's uh, it's really it's uh, in my opinion one of the better bookmakers, if not the best bookmaker out there. Our place accumulator will begin in race number two and you'll need to get your bet on here by 13.10 and it's a maiden plate for fillies and mares over 1600 meters and uh, we start off uh, with uh, some interviews now and uh, we will listen in to Alec Laird and Peter Musket. Uh, yeah thanks Warren, she um, big filly, lovely big filly, big stride, um, it was only the other day she had her first run, it was, uh, so, it's a week in between which is <clears throat> not always my style, but that, as it turned out, um, the race was just mainly, it, it worked out to be a gallop for her because she was a bit green and she never really got into a stride. So she took the race well, her weight's good, and uh, with the experience under her belt, I think she she could make her presence felt. I think uh, we might see more what, she, what she's capable of, and especially over the mile. Yeah, Safari Lodge uh, ran below expectations at her third start. Uh, she'd shown encouraging ability at her second start when ridden quietly and she ran home strongly that day. Uh, last time out we went forward with her uh, and she didn't finish off her race. Uh, she's well drawn on Sunday, so we will ride her with a little bit more restraint early which hopefully we'll see her finishing off better. Uh, she's, a, she's an evolving filly, um, obviously a very strong pedigree, uh, and I think the best is still in front of her. Well, some uh, positive comments coming through from both those tables, Graham, and I must agree that I read the script exactly like Peter Musket did when it comes to the way Safari Lodge has raced at her last two starts. And the fact that she does get a better draw uh, we've heard uh, the tactics that are going to be adopted if it goes to plan, you know, give her a chance. And uh, the way she's been racing, I think that she could be ready to win. She's priced up at 28 to 10 just as a guide. And then uh, it is 4 to 1 and better, no, 7 to 2 and better the balance. Number 1's at 7 to 2, 3 at 6 to 1, uh, 6 at 8 to 1, 7 at 4 to 1, 8 at 7 to 1 and 9 is at 5 to 1. I think the market's got it right with this Philly Graham, and again, uh, keep an eye on Gavin Larina throughout the meeting. Not just Gavin Larina, Alec Laird. I was quite uh, impressed with his yes. comments there. I was taken with his comments at number three, Tuscan Stars. Clearly was disappointed. She played the fool last week, if you sure. read between the lines. Sure. She didn't really put in any kind of effort at all. So he's uh, backing her up just seven days later, which uh, is not his style. So watch out for a much better run from number three, Tuscan Star. And Alec Laird is one of the key trainers at this meeting. He's got seven runners uh, throughout the program, and many of them will be fancied. I see this race a little more open, a little more, more competitive than perhaps just the two that have been mentioned. Clearly, respect for three, Tuscan Star, and five, Safari Lodge. The form for me is not strong enough to actually nail my colours to mm. the mast. Uh, interestingly, Jermaine Maharaj, uh, one of our colleagues in the tipping game is number nine, Jed Lavish, as his best bet on the card. Um, ran second behind Safe and Sound last time out. The daughter of One World clearly appreciating going a little bit further, being out of a Silvano mare. Not the best of draws. Blinkers go on number eight, Silver Jubilee, but she's disappointed too often. Um, Zolo Zolo and D-Day. I think D-Day, although she has shown perhaps a better form on the turf, uh, on the poly rather, uh, could be a factor here. And watch out for improvement from number one, Laugh Till I Cry. I know that uh, Glenn has been really disappointed with her last two starts, expected a lot better. There has been money around for her on more than one occasion. She's cracked pole position again. She's got pole position in the last three starts, so she certainly knows how to crack a draw, uh, number one, Laugh Till I Cry. So I think it's a little more tricky than perhaps, uh, than perhaps what you've suggested, but I might be wrong. I've, in fact, gone... Five, six, and nine in the, in the buy pot. Safari Lodge, D Day, and Jet Lavish. Hoping, always throwing one little outsider into the play just to maybe get a bit of an upset. But healthy respect. I was quite taken with what I heard from Alec Laird. So I'm expecting 
A big run from number three, Tuscan Star. Yeah, we've got some lightly race fillies here, guys. So there will be improvement to come, especially over the 1,600-meter trip. We've got a front runner in D-Day that will be hoping to hold on. Safari Lodge is going to be given a chance. I, I like uh, the thought process of Jermaine, as uh, uh, Graham mentioned, um, that he tips this as one of his best bets on the card because last time out, uh, that was a good run. And uh, this filly has now had one, two, three runs for Kumar and Naidu, and he's getting to the bottom of her. I think the 1,600-meter trip could be ideal for us. So Graham's played it a bit wide in leg one of the bar pot. I think numbers five and six good enough. But after those comments from Alec Laird, I suspect that the six to one on Tuscan Stout is not going to last. <laughs> It's Donovan Everture from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pool Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.